Hello, and welcome to day 35 of our 40 days of preparation. And we're talking about the Great Commission, and that's our focus. In fact, I want to read out of Mark chapter 16. I'm going to read out of the ESV version, and I'm going to read from verses 14 all the way to the end at verse 20. This is what it says. Afterward, he, Jesus, appeared to the 11 themselves as they were reclining at table And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. If I could put any subject on this or title on this, it would just be from reclining to reaching from reclining to reaching. You see in verse 14, Uh, Just look at what it says there. Afterward, he appeared to the 11 themselves as they were reclining at the table. They were reclining and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. And so as we're looking at what does this mean? Jesus is coming back to circle back with his disciples to say, no, the point of what has happened and what is happening and what I have paid for is not to recline It's not to hang out. It's not to just commune together. In fact, he equated that to unbelief because you didn't believe that those who saw me really saw me. And you didn't really believe what I had said, which is that I would rise again. You're just hanging out. You're reclining. And I think it's so interesting that the scripture details that. But then Jesus gives them an immediate action item. He says, go. In other words, stop reclining and start reaching. Get up from the relaxation or the laziness or even what he said, the unbelief and go. And then he didn't just say, go next door. He said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, proclaim the good news. Go tell people at every edge of the earth this good news. And he said to the whole creation, don't stop. Don't let economics get in the way. Don't let um, government structures get in the way or caste systems get in the way. Go to the whole of creation and proclaim this gospel. And there's this commitment from Jesus that as they would move from reclining from, from this position of unbelief, he says, but those who believe we'll see miraculous signs and wonders take place. That in fact, these would be the signs that happen. They'll cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. And he's not just talking about those who are currently hearing him, who were the ones reclining. He said, this is a message to everyone who believes hereafter. So every person who comes into this belief system and believes the good news, believes the gospel, they will be the ones who cast out demons. So as we're talking about making disciples that make disciples, Jesus was already implementing that. He said that everyone now from this point forward who believes, they'll see demons cast out. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll be protected to the point if a serpent bites them or if they drink something deadly, that will not affect them. They will not die from those things. And then he committed that they'll be the ones who are laying hands on the sick and those sick people will recover. It's a powerful statement. And so what happens at the end of verse 20, those who heard this message from Jesus moved. They got up from reclining and they went into this mission field that Jesus commanded them to go after he was taken up into heaven. And in verse 20, it says they went out and preached where everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message, what message? The gospel. So it happened just like Jesus said, and this is the model. This is what we're supposed to be doing. So what does this mean to us? This means this is exactly our mandate. This is our commission. This is exactly what Jesus meant. He said, from this point forward, no more reclining, 
No, if you are just hanging out, thinking that at one time, sometime things are going to change. Jesus said, that's unbelief. You have to move. You have to go is what Jesus said. So for us, this means that we're not, uh, we don't have the luxury to sit around and uh, wonder if the things that we have heard and the things that Jesus has taught and the things that we have even read ourselves from scripture, if they're going to work. He says, no, you have to go into all the world. And if you believe in these things and you teach others to believe these things, then you will see this company sign. So for us, it means to us that we have no excuse. It means that we have to work. If, if we need to, we need to work on our belief system so that we're those who believe. And these disciples, it was simple for them. They heard what Jesus said and they began to move. They moved by faith. We don't have any indication that something dramatically changed in what Jesus said to them, except he called them out and said, no, you you're relaxing here. You need to go. And all that changed was seems that to me that they caught this word from the Lord. And some of us, that's where we need to be. That's what it means to us. If you, maybe you found yourself reclining and relaxing and thinking that maybe you're even in the sunset stages of your ministry. And Jesus is coming to your table and saying, hey, uh, go, go into all the world, preach this gospel to every creature, no more discriminating, no more picking and choosing who's going to be able to hear it, who's who you're comfortable sharing it with. Know that you have to share it with all of creation. In fact, while I'm talking, some of you, you're feeling that stirring of like, yep, that's me. I've been reclining. I've been relaxing. I haven't been uh, intentional about going. And here's the great news. And this is a powerful word for us that as you go, like the disciples in verse 20, as you go and you do this and you go even everywhere, everywhere you go, that the Lord will work with you. This is what it says. It worked with them. He'll work with you. And, and that, and he will confirm your words, the gospel that comes out of your mouth. He'll confirm it with accompanying signs, the same signs he told his disciples would happen. He will confirm it in you. Praise God. Praise God. This is encouraging. This is meant for you and me to take God at his word and start to go fulfill the great commission in the name of Jesus. Fulfill this mandate that Jesus not only told those who are currently at that particular table, but he's saying it to you. Maybe in your car, maybe you're getting ready today. Maybe you're sitting at a table, wherever you may find yourself. He is speaking to you and he is committing to you that he will show up when you obey. Let's respond to him. Part of our response today is saying, Lord, I'm sorry that I have not been diligent Or maybe, Lord, I'm sorry for unbelief that I haven't been believing you to the point that I've been acting and moving and going into all of the world to preach this gospel. And then after you repent, then say, commit, then say, Lord, I commit to you today that I will be one who goes and spreads this gospel starting today, not tomorrow. I will start today on day 35 of this 40 days of preparation, I will, I will begin. I'm going, I'm going into the, this, this great commission, this field. So let's pray together. Father, we come to you in Jesus name. And Lord, we do, we repent for any place where we have been in unbelief, disobedient, where we have held back, maybe even reclined. And Lord, we commit to start reaching today. We, we commit to start declaring the gospel and preaching the gospel to every person without prejudice, without discrimination, And Lord, we thank you that your commitment is to us, that you will work with us, that you're going to work with us. And we're going to see accompanying signs. We're going to see more miracles than ever before, not because of our goodness, not because of of, uh, we're the powerful one, but because we are obedient and we're doing what it is that you've called us to do. So we commit these things to you, Lord, in Jesus name. Amen.